Hello everyone, today I'll show you my 4th Infantry Division 22nd Infantry Regiment impression for the Battle of Broome. The Battle of Broome lasted from the 4th till the 12th of February 1945 and it was the fiercest battle for the division in 1945. So, I'll start with the uniforms then I'll go to the equipment and I'll do some small items but the majority of the personal items will be covered in another video. Okay so let's get into the uniforms. The basic of it is pretty normal but except for the HBTs which were the iconic piece pretty much for the 4th Infantry Division. Um, yeah that's the only exception a bit to the US uniform that was standard at the time. So we'll start in the most uh, on the body layer. The M37 wool shirt. It's the standard shirt of the US Army during World War II, worn by pretty much everyone except for the Marines. So yeah, this is a, a late war type with the dark green buttons, and overall the jacket is a little bit more green than brown as opposed to the wood, uh, the early war variant. It's a nice original shirt, uh, fits me good. And here you have the tag, still dating to May 1945. So still in the war, barely, but it's still in it. And here we got, you know, another Tag, but I don't know what it is but you know it's pretty cool it's still in there it's never used I think except for maybe by this guy but it was never worn anyway so on top of that we'll be wearing your HBT jacket this is a really special thing you don't see it done too much in the end of the war but they did it they wore these jackets throughout the entirety of the war they would replace them of course with new ones because they would be completely destroyed but yeah this is basically what they had on them the entirety of the war which is pretty cool it's really useful i use this just to carry rations basically it fits your two carry rations which is perfect because then you save more space in bags this would be worn over top of the m37 and underneath the m43 which is you know doable it's not too annoying and yeah, this is a reproduction by QMI, a really good one, everything's correct. And yeah, as I told you, I just keep it now for K rations, or here is a bandage in it too, a small one, just if you had minor injury. Yeah, here you can see one, just perfectly made for it. Then as most, on top layer. You would have your M43 standard jacket in the late war for the US Army. I have a hood on it. This is a hood is original, dated 1945, uh, as you can see there. And it's on a M43 jacket from QMI. It's a really good reproduction, one of the best for sure. I also added my name inside of it which is a pretty cool thing to do makes it more personal and yeah these jackets would be seen with almost everyone if they didn't have these they would just wear the hbt's i've seen that done too so then up to the trousers you would uh, first wear your standard m37 wool trousers here i have a pair of originals um, to wear so these are pretty nice they are early war they have a lot of wear on them from combat use real combat use I mean uh, it's early war because it doesn't have the gas flap yet which is you know good they could have kept these for the entirety of the war since with the HBT on top these pretty much wouldn't get damaged really nice trousers they have been shortened in the war but you know, would I still fit me? 
Next up we have HBT trousers, also by QMI. Um, these are really useful, these pockets are giant, you can fit a lot in them. I use it for ammo or, uh, you know, cloth or whatever, really useful. I have an original belt in this one, and yeah, basically over the M37s and it's fine. Here I have a reproduction belt in it. I just wear the original on top because it's more visible. So let's get on to equipment. Okay, so let's get over to equipment right now. There's quite a lot of it. It's pretty standard. Nothing too special was done by them. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Starting with the helmet here. Um, yeah, this is just your standard helmet. <coughs> kind of like you would, you would see them most of the time in late war. They would either have uh, an M44 net or no net. Here I have an M44 net that I kind of made myself. The mesh is a little bit too big, but you know, you can always change that. It has a quick strap. The helmet itself is post war, um, but it's still a fiberglass liner, which makes it a bit more correct. Only just the color is a bit or is wrong. Um, I have some paper inside of it, you know, to keep it dry, some personal stuff. And then here you have the, the boots, the most important piece probably of your clothing, you need to keep your feet dry. So these were the double buckle boots, um, these were most common to be seen, most of the time they would, or not most of the time, they had these most of the time and sometimes they also wore the overshoes uh, over them. You can also see the in regular um, boots without the leather part here, so with the leggings, but really not not a lot anymore. So now let's, now let's get over to the belt setup. It's a pretty heavily loaded belt, as you can see, but it carries everything you could need. So let's get start. Let's start with the belt itself here. The 10 pocket cartridge belt for the M1 Grand would hold 10 of these clips. These are just post war deactivated rounds. And um, this belt here, let me show you, is the yeah, original. The date of it has yeah, pretty much faded. I can't make out what it said anymore, but I'm guessing it's about 1942, 1941 maybe. It has a steel buckle, so no early brass one. Uh, it, it was pretty heavily used. You can see the imprints of bullets in the canvas that was already there when I bought this one, and this one just has wood in it now. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice belt. Two of these lifted tops dots were broken. Um, but that's not a problem, it makes it more special, in my opinion. Uh, and then, yeah, let's go here first. On top of the belt we got suspenders, you see them wearing these a lot, um, because they're really comfortable. These are 1941 dated, if I can find the date here. It's hard to read, but you can definitely see. The 1941 um, on the belt itself I carry my bayonet this is a reproduction but a good one um, and then here we have a shovel M43 shovel these were pretty much the only ones you saw no more T handles inside here I got a 1944 dated shovel in the 45 dated cover it's probably pretty hard to see. Let me see five. Um, 
this is an OD7, which is not done enough when it comes to late war impressions. I've seen pictures of a guy of guys with entire loadouts in OD7, only OD7, and you gotta see it like we do now because for them this color was new this was a better camouflage color so they wanted the new stuff they didn't want the old belts they wanted the new ones it's like we would have a new camo in our military today you wouldn't want the old uniforms you would want the new ones so yeah it was done a lot it was seen a lot these new new od7 ones here we have a canteen 1945 dated in the cover from QMI, it's a really good reproduction with the correct brass. Lift the dot. Yeah. Here you can see the back. Um, here's a first aid pouch, the original first aid tin. The pouch is a replica, but I aged it so it looked a lot better. Um, yeah, that's it for the belt. Let's quickly go over here now. Here we got the Grand, a Denix replica, but I did a lot of work on it. I redid the wood, I gave it a log bar sight, and yeah, I just used it so it looked a bit beat up and stuff. I also had kill stripes here, three, and it was pretty cool. I've seen it done on originals. Um, here we have the dock tags. I saw this also in originals that there was a bullet on it, so I did that. A V38, and here you just have your regular regular dock tags taped together. Um, two grenades, since it was an assault. These are World War II gear replicas. These are really good, made of metal. Uh, yeah, these are the best you can get right now. And then for bags and all, my gas mask bag, uh, original, also OD7, as you can see, it has a lot of, a lot of field modifications to it. This tab here broke, so they added it, he, uh, the soldier added the strap from the internal straps he made this which is pretty cool it made it makes it fit even more so that's always nice and here this strap was shortened and now you can wear it tightly around you and it's high on your back and it doesn't flop around i have a map case strap here if i want to carry it on, carry it on my hip here we got two bandoliers um yeah you, it was an assault, so you would need it. This is uh, pretty useful. And yeah, you can carry one or two, you can choose. Here we have a GP bag, also an original, 1945 dated. It's a really cool one. Um, yeah, it's still like transitional. This is like still the OD3. But this is OD7, and here we have like more brownish OD7 on the strap, which is pretty cool. And here's the date, 1945. It has an original, uh, more rare strap on it, with the two hooks for late war, instead of the two loops like this, because they changed that for some reason. And here's the date, 1944. Canic company. Yeah, these straps are pretty nice to find. Again, yeah, all OD7. And here's just some ammo that you can put inside of it. This is for the carbine, but you know, you gotta help your bodies out with the carbine. And here you got to, <coughs> here you got the haversack, um, World War II impressions replica. They didn't carry it in the sole itself because I couldn't see it on the pictures, but uh, yeah, they definitely had it in the back. So yeah, that was it for the impression. Hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the personal items video.